right. Sky Moore. We took Sky Moore in the second round. I think we actually traded back. Do you remember what pick it was in the second round we traded back to to grab Sky Moore? Um, it was number 54 overall. It was the 22nd pick in round two. Right. So excellent value on that. I mean, Brett Veach killed it there. Uh, when he traded back, I think everyone in Chiefs Kingdom was like, oh, well, they don't want George Pickens. Because that's what everyone was thinking. Like, they're going to take George Pickens in the second round if he's available. But when he was available and they traded back, I think everyone shifted. But obviously, on their board and in Kansas City's mind, they always had their eye on Sky Moore. So, that's awesome. But anyway, Sky Moore, he was born September 10th in the year 2000. So, he is 21 years old. He was born in New Kensington, Pennsylvania. So, he went to high school at Shadyside Academy at Fox Chapel, Pennsylvania. Uh, Pittsburgh kid. He loved Pittsburgh Steelers. Like that's how he grew up, man. High school. He actually played quarterback and defensive back in high school. Yeah, he did. He played QB and DB. And he's actually the first player in his conference high school history to have a 1000 yard rushing season and 1000 yard passing season in the same year in back to back seasons. Yeah, he did it. Junior and senior year. As far as colleges go, they were they were recruiting him off of being a defensive back. So that's crazy to think about, too, that he made that switch in college and turned into the receiver that he turned into. Hey, if you know, you know how defenders are going to 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 check you and different things like that, like it gives you sort of an advantage. You get in the mind frame of a DB, you know how to beat a DB. And that probably trans, you know, translated into him being so good at wide receiver. He's got 31 inch arms and 10 and a fourth inch hands. That may be the biggest hands in the entire, you know, receiver class this year, I think, right? Wasn't it? Right. I mean, he's not a small guy. He's 5'10, so he's not particularly big, but he's not exactly small either. 195 pounds. Uh, that's some pretty uh, monster hands on a guy that's 5'10. <laughs> Dude, if you watch his games, you have to like search. You have to search. I'm talking deep dive. To try to find where he drops a pass. Oh, like, he's that's sure how good handed, he is. He's as sure-handed as you can get. Like if he's, you say sure hands, he will spring to mind. Hey, his drop rate was insanely low. He's the exact opposite of Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill wants to catch with his body. This dude's using his hands. Hopefully, all these like tipped picks that Patrick Mahomes had to endure last year, thanks to Tyree Kill and Demarcus Robinson, is out the window. And uh, Sky Moore, I think, is going to be the reliable target that he looks at. Looking at his college offers, so it's not the big names you would think. It's not your Alabamas and your Clemsons and things. But when I read you this list, tell me what jumps off the page. He was recruited by Albany, Buffalo, Brown University, Columbia University, Delaware, Duquesne, Howard, Richmond, Holy Cross, Rice, Fordham, Lehigh, Robert Morris, and Yale. So the thing that jumps off to me is this kid is smart. Yeah, a lot of Ivy League schools thrown in the mix Dude, there. Sprinkled if Columbia down. and Brown and Yale are offering you, like, you have a very good mental fortitude about you. Like, he is a smart kid. So I think he's going to be able to do a lot with just his mental side and his focus and just his sure hands. And he's he's fast, too. He ran a four four one. I mean, that's pretty quick. At Western Michigan, he actually ran in a – a system that was full of RPOs and things like that. So I'm sure Andy Reid uh, loved that, uh, you know, that he's conditioned for that, even though hopefully we're getting away from some of that this season. But I think Scott Moore gives you a lot. He's, he's definitely fast, like you said. Uh, he can go out, make things happen deep. But he's also going to be a – he's an immaculate route runner. Uh, he never yes. runs the wrong route. He's smart. He knows his playbook. And he, he's going to give you that option in the middle of the field, kind of like Juju. Uh, you can put him in the slot and make some things happen. You can. He's going to catch contested catches over the middle and things like that. A lot of things that Tyreek Kill didn't give you. So if you're actually looking at him as a replacement for Tyreek Kill, obviously you can't be like, oh, Sky Moore's a better receiver than Hill. I mean, Hill's a generational talent, but it's 99% because of his speed and quickness. But, I mean, I think you're getting a complete player as far as route running, uh, consistency, reliability, and just versatility. 
yeah, they've already said, they've already told him that, hey, we're not bringing you in here to replace Tyreek Hill. We just want you to do you. And I think they will replace Tyreek Hill in other facets. You have MVS, you know, blowing the top off. You have Juju running some of these, like, little out routes. I think with his route running ability and the way he's so shifty and his good hands, he also, I think he had the most uh, forced missed tackles on him. So he plays tough, and he does not get taken down very easily. No, he makes people miss like crazy. I mean, his uh, yak ability is amazing. He, I think he actually made more people miss tackles than anybody in college football last season. Am I correct? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If it wasn't first, he was in the top two or three. So he was right up there. Scott Moore actually... He was projected by a lot of analysts to go in the first round of the draft. And a lot of people mocked him to Kansas City in the first round. So uh, I know that I watched a little bit about Sky Moore and kind of his path to the draft. I think he actually put a video out on YouTube about it. But uh, it was pretty interesting. And I know that a lot of his family and friends and even him to some extent, I think they were really, you know, hoping to get to Pittsburgh He wanted to play at home for the home team. But his dad, from the beginning, when they asked him, where do you want Scott to land? He said, Kansas City. Like, hands down. He's going to play with the best quarterback, with the best coach, and in a great place. So, I mean, I thought that was cool. His dad pretty much saw it coming, and that was pretty neat. Pittsburgh had a chance to draft him, and they took George Pickens. Did you know that he was a two-time first-team All-Mac player? And in 2019, he was first-team All-Mac. Um, it was the first Western Michigan wide receiver to do that since Corey Davis. Like, that's a name, you know? Yeah. Like, Corey Davis kind of come into the league, and we thought he was going to be something. He's not really panned out, so let's hope Sky Moore pans out a little better than Corey Davis. Right, but he's he's not terrible. But yeah, he was very highly touted coming out of college. Right. So as a freshman, he led the team with 51 receptions for 802 yards, and he had three TDs. But uh, this last season, he was really impressive. He was tied for ninth in the FBS with 95 receptions, almost 1,300 yards receiving, and 10 total touchdowns in 12 games. So he is one of the elite playmakers in the entire draft, and – Kansas City, man, they got some value off of them. And I think, as I stated in the last episode, this guy could be a dark horse to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, to be honest, with Patrick Mahomes. Super impressive stats in college. And like we were talking about earlier, very versatile. Going to be a great weapon for Mahomes. I think once they get some chemistry together, he still hasn't really got a whole lot of time in uh, at OTAs or anything. He's still nursing that hamstring injury. And at first, it was supposed to not be a big deal, but now it's still lingering. So it's starting to be a little bit of a question mark, a little bit of a concern for Chiefs fans and probably analysts alike. Uh, Hopefully, there's not a whole lot to that. But I think he did actually go to Texas in the little, you know, Mahomes camp type deal that they did down there in Texas for a few weeks. So uh, at least he got some reps in with Mahomes. So maybe they can, you know, have a little bit of chemistry work in, getting their timing together. Uh, as well as the other guys that went down there. Yeah, the thing, I I don't think we have to worry about Sky Moore and his ability to want to work hard. Like, um, this was something I was going to say about him earlier. When he came out of high school, he was a three-star recruit. That was it, just a three-star. And uh, I think nationally, he was ranked in his class like over like 2,500. Like, he was like 2,600 or something like that ranked. And then in just three to four years in college, he becomes the number 54 pick of the draft. Like that shows you how much he worked to get to where he is. Like that's insane that you can go from say 2,500 to just 50 top 50. It shows his work ethic. And again, I don't know how many times we can say it. It seems like Brett Beach was looking at character and toughness and you're just your love for the game, this draft. And I think it's going to pay big dividends for sure. If you guys haven't been over to his YouTube channel to watch path to the draft, do that i highly suggest that you'll see a little bit of backstory on him you'll also get to see uh just how his work ethic is like he's definitely one of those guys that want to get after it he wants to do the best that he can and be the best receiver that he can be so super excited to have him in kansas city i can't wait to see how this turns out with him yeah me either um that's about all i got for him but before we go what do you have you got a chance to comp him to a different player i know i like to throw out the comps uh i do not know I have Golden Tate. Do you remember him? 
I remember you saying that a long time ago. A, yeah, like I see a lot of Golden Tate. He he has just enough quickness. He has just enough shiftability. He's got good hands. Yeah, so he actually saw something where he said the receivers that he likes to watch, that he wants to be like, sort of, or who he would like to mimic. Uh, he actually um, cited Devonte Adams and Jamar Chase and guys like that. It was it was strange. He didn't pick any of the little quick receivers. He also said Justin Jefferson, and uh, he didn't, you know, he did not want, say, a Tyree Kill or Cooper Cup or anything like that. It was just uh, the other guy. So I thought that was interesting. That is kind of interesting. That must mean he's very confident in his ability to, like, be a number one receiver, line up on the outside, not just have to rely on the slot. I mean, he is tough. He's got good hands. He's fast. He makes good catches. He's, he's, he plays through contact. He's got all the intangibles and he's got the work ethics. I think the, you know, the sky's the limit pun, yeah. but, uh, I mean, it's true. I think sky Moore could be, he could be a still in this draft, to be honest. It was a really safe pick, uh, to take sky Moore there in the second round, because I just don't see a, a whole lot of downside with this kid. Like, I feel like you're probably looking at his floor right now. And like you said, the, the goofy pun, everybody likes to use when they're talking about him. Sky's the limit with this guy. I think uh, the ceiling's high, and I think the floor's, you know, already here. So I mean, it's only going to get better. Yeah, I think where we drafted him, you could. It, it's almost like a a surefire like hit because uh, when we had done our things, I actually had the Chiefs. I mocked the Chiefs taking him in the first round, pick thirty. Yeah, and they they got him. You know, twenty four picks later, so great value. I mean, Beach, you can't say. You know enough how how good of a job Beach done this year. So all right. So if you learned anything about Sky Moore, you're excited to see how he fits into this Kansas City Chiefs offense, or if you think maybe he can pull off Rookie of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year, I'd like you to give this video a like, leave a comment down at the bottom, let us know what you think about it. Also subscribe, hit the notification. We appreciate you guys watching, and we'll be back with more on Brian Cook next. We'll see you next time.